Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Bacora here, back with another installment of Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Bloom. We left off. Um, Peter and his buddy Jimmy were in Central Park, and they were going to their rock, and who should be there but Sheila. So let's see what happens as we read Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. And boys and girls, if you hear some snoring, it's not me reading the book. It would be my puppy, Winston, who has fallen asleep next to me. So if you hear some snoring, don't be alarmed. It's just him. I guess he doesn't like this book. So here we go. Let's read Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. So remember, they're in the park. So here we go. Just then, who should come tearing down the path but Fudge? My mother was right behind him, hollering, Fudgy, wait for Mommy! But when Fudge gets going, he doesn't wait for anybody. He was after some pigeons. Birdie, here, Birdie, he called. That brother of mine loves birds, but he can't get it through his head that the birds aren't about to let him catch them. Hey, Mom, I said. My mother stopped running. Peter, am I glad to see you? I can't keep up with Fudge. Mrs. Hatcher, Mrs. Hatcher, Sheila called, scrambling down from our rock. I'll watch Fudge for you. I'll take good care of him, can I, Mrs. Hatcher? Oh, please. Sheila jumped up and down and begged some more. Jimmy gave me an elbow in the ribs. He thought that my mom would let Sheila watch Fudge and then we'd be rid of her. We'd be free to play secret agent. But Jimmy didn't know that my mother would never trust Sheila with her dear little boy. Fudge, in the meantime, was screaming, Come back, birdies! Come back to Fudgy! Then my mother did a strange thing. She checked her watch and said, You know, I do have to run back to her apartment. I forgot to turn on the oven. Do you really think you could keep an eye on Fudge for just 10 minutes? Of course I can, Mrs. Hatcher, Sheila said. I know all about babysitting for my sister. Sheila's sister Libby is in seventh grade. She's about as beautiful as Sheila. The only difference is she's bigger. My mother hesitated. I don't know, she said. I've never left Fudge before. She looked at me. Peter, what? Will you and Jimmy help Sheila watch Fudge while I run home for a minute? Oh, Mom, do we have to? Please, Peter, I'll be right back. I'll feel better if through all three of you are watching him. What do you say? I asked Jimmy. Sure, he answered. Why not? But I'm in charge of Fudgy, aren't I? Sheila asked my mom. Well, I guess so, my mom said to Sheila. You probably do know more about babysitting. Why don't you all take Fudge over to the playground? Then I'll know where to find you. Swell, Mrs. Hatcher, Sheila said. Don't you worry, Fudgy will be just fine. My mom turned to Fudge. Now you be a good boy for 10 minutes. Mommy will be right back, okay? Good boy, Fudge said. Good, good, good. As soon as my mom was gone, Fudge took off. Can't catch me. He hollered, can't catch Fudgy. Go get him, Sheila, I said. You're in charge, remember? Me and Jimmy horsed around while Sheila ran after Fudge. When she caught him, we decided we'd better go to the playground like my mother said. It was a lot easier to keep an eye on him in a smaller place. Anyways, Fudge likes to come on, climb on the jungle gym, and that way he can't get lost. As soon as we got to the playground, Sheila started chasing me. Peter's got the cooties. Peter's got the cooties, she yelled. Cut that out, I said. So she chased Jimmy. Jimmy's got the cooties. Jimmy's got the cooties. Me and Jimmy decided to fight back. So what if she's a girl? She started it. We grabbed her by the arms. She squirmed and tried to get away from it, us. But we wouldn't let go. We hollered really loud. Sheila's got the cooties. Sheila's got the cooties. All three of us were so busy fooling around that we didn't notice Fudge on the jungle gym until he called, Peter, Peter. That's how he says my name. What? I asked. See, see. Fudge flapped his arms around. Fudgy's a birdie. Fudgy's a birdie. Fly, birdie, fly. That crazy kid. I thought, running to the jungle gym with Sheila and Jimmy right behind me. But it was too late. Fudge already found out he didn't have wings. He fell to the ground. He was screaming and crying and his face was a mess of blood. I couldn't even tell where the blood was coming from at first. Then Jimmy handed me his handkerchief. I don't know how clean it was, but it was better than nothing. I mopped some of the 
some blood off Fudge's face. Sheila cried, it wasn't my fault. Honest, it wasn't. Oh, shut up, I told her. He's really a mess, Jimmy said, inspecting Fudge. And his teeth are gone, too. What are you talking about? I asked Jimmy. Look at his mouth, Jimmy said. Now while he's screaming, see, he's got a big space where he used to have his front teeth. Oh, no, Sheila screamed. He's right. Fudgy's teeth are gone. Fudge stopped crying for a minute. All gone? He asked. Open your mouth wide, I said. He did, and I looked in. It was true. His top two front teeth were missing. My mother's going to kill you, Sheila, I said. Was I glad I wasn't left in charge of my brother. Sheila cried louder, but it was an accident. He did it himself, himself. You better find his teeth, I said. Where should I look? Sheila asked. On the ground, stupid. Sheila crawled around looking for Fudge's teeth while I tried to clean him up some more. See, Fudge said, showing me all his wounds. Boo-boo here and here, more boo-boo here. His knees and elbows were all scraped up. I'm going to go get your mother, Jimmy hollered, running out of the playground. Good idea, I called. I just can't find them, Sheila said. Well, keep looking, I yelled. Honestly, Peter, there aren't any teeth here. All good, Fudge asked again. Not all, I told him, just two. Fudge started screaming. I want my teeth, want my teeth. Jimmy must have met my mother on her way back to the park because it only took about two minutes for her to get there. By that time, a whole crowd of kids had gathered around us. Most of them were crawling on the ground like Sheila, looking for Fudge's teeth. My mom picked up Fudge. Oh, my baby, my precious, my little love. She kissed him all over. Show mommy where it hurts. Fudge showed her all his boo-boos. Then he said, all gone. What's all gone? My mother asked. His two, top two front teeth, I said. Oh, no, my mother cried. Oh, my poor little angel. Sheila sniffled and said, I just can't find the Mrs. Hatcher. I looked everywhere, but Fudge's teeth are gone. He must have swallowed them, my mom said, looking into Fudge's mouth. Oh, Mrs. Hatcher, how awful. I'm sorry. I'm really very sorry, Sheila cried. What will happen to him? He'll be all right, Sheila, my mom said. I'm sure it was an accident. Nobody's blaming you. Sheila started bawling again. My mother said, let's go home now. I thought my mother was being pretty easy on Sheila. After all, she was left in charge. When we got home, Mom washed Fudge's cuts and scrapes with peroxide. Then she called Dr. Code. He told her to take Fudge to our dentist. So my mother called Dr. Brown's office and made an appointment for the next day. When that was done, she gave Fudge some socks to play with. I went into the kitchen to have a glass of juice. My mother followed me. Peter Warren Hatcher, she said. I'm sorry I can't trust you for just 10 minutes. Me? I asked. Trust me? What's this got to do with me? My mother raised her voice. I left your brother with you for 10 minutes and just look what happened. I'm disgusted with you. It was Sheila's fault, I said. You said Sheila was in charge. So how come you're mad at me and not at Sheila? I just am, my mother shouted. I ran to my room and slammed the door. I watched Dribble walk around on his favorite rock. My mother's the meanest mother in the whole world, I told my turtle. She loves fudge more than me. She doesn't even love me anymore. She doesn't even like me. Maybe I'm not her real son. Maybe somebody left me in a basket on her doorstep. My real mother's probably a beautiful princess. I bet she'd like to have me back. Nobody needs me around here, that's for sure. I didn't eat much supper that night and I had a lot of trouble falling asleep. The next morning, my mom came into my room and sat down on my bed. I didn't look at her. Peter, she said. I didn't answer. Peter, I said some things yesterday that I didn't really mean. I looked at her. Honest, I asked. Yes, you see, I was very upset over Fudge's accident and I had to blame somebody, so I picked on you. Yes, I said, you sure did. It wasn't your fault though, I know that. It was an accident. It could have happened even if I'd been in the playground myself. He wanted to fly, I said. He thought he was a bird. I don't think he'll try to fly again, my mom said. Me either, I told her. Then we both laughed, and I knew she was my real mother after all. All right, boys and girls, we're going to stop there. So tune in tomorrow for Chapter 5.